okay, sure. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Okay, um, I'd guess that women find you repulsive and that you've never had a normal relationship your entire life. Aren't you supposed to be guessing my weight? Oh, I, I'm getting to it. But I'd also <laughs> guess that uh, your mother was overprotective of you and that your father hated you, and because of it, uh, you wet the bed uh, once, no, twice a week. Am I right? I'm right, aren't I? <laughs> what about my weight? 165. Damn! Thank you. It's been an interesting week. This week in politics, our two Senate candidates, Patty Murray and Linda Smith, having a hard time, having a hard time setting up a debate. You know, they say that their staff, uh, people say that it's because of scheduling conflicts, arguments over the format of the debate, and uh, the fact that neither of them are real anxious for the public to see the candidates in action, because then the voters would learn that Patty Murray is, how should we put this, not the brightest star in God's universe. <laughs> And that Linda Smith is a very bright star with a really erratic orbit. Very erratic. <laughs> we got a great choice, don't we? It's the miracle of democracy. Wow, we got it here. In other political news, our state attorney general, Christine Gregoire, is busy suing the tobacco companies. And she says that the tobacco people are holding back files that show they were aware of the dangers of smoking many years ago, but covered up the evidence. Well, the tobacco companies want to respond to that charge, so here from the United States Tobacco Institute is Mr. Ralph Harrington. <gasps> that is ridiculous. <gasps> we have never hidden any files. <gasps> there is no proof that cigarettes are harmful to your health. <gasps> Well, that clears that up. Glad he had a chance to respond there. Now, we've got a great show to keep you happy tonight. As you know, we've always been a supporter of the arts, and this new segment pre presents the art of acting at its finest. Previously on Dummy Shot Theater. Wait a minute. I don't understand. Harry, why are you looking at me that way? Almost as if you were going to... throw me off of the road! What have I done? I've killed the only person who ever meant anything to me. I can't go on. I'm going to throw myself off the roof. And now this week's episode of Dummy Shot Theater. Boy, it sure is beautiful up here, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Hey. Why don't I get a picture of you over by the edge of that big cliff? Okay. But I certainly hope I don't slip and fall. Oh, don't be such a worry wart. Just relax, you'll be fine. Just back up just a little bit. No, a little more. Oh. Ah! Oh. Boy, everything looks so small from up here. How high up are we anyway? Uh, 7,000 feet. Whoa. 
Oh, by the way, your door's rattling a little. You want to check that? Uh, shouldn't I put my seatbelt on first so I don't get sucked out? <laughs> don't worry, you'll be fine. Just swing it open and shut a few times. Okay. Whoa! And now, a scene from next week's Dummy Shot Theater. Bummer about your brother Tom falling out of that airplane last week. Yeah, but well, what are you gonna do? Yeah, people should be more careful, huh? Uh huh. Come on, let's cross now. I don't know. That truck's coming awfully fast. Oh, come on, we can make it. Well, okay. Boy, that was close. Next week on Dummy Shot Theater. This looks like fun. Come on, let's try it. Come on. Go ahead. Guess my weight. I'll guess uh, 112 pounds. That is amazing. That is truly amazing. Give him the money, dear. No way. He's not even close. He is right on the money. Give him the $2. I'm not giving him the $2. Look, get on the scale. Let's see how right he is, okay? No, no, that's okay. I, I believe her. Okay, Mr. Fool the Guesser. Guess me. Okay, I'll guess that as soon as you leave here, your day at the fair is basically over and that you won't be getting any for a long, long time. He's right, dear. Give him the two dollars. I'm not giving him the two dollars. I'm guessing that you'd better quit while you're ahead. Right again, dear. Give him four dollars. Okay, step right up and fool the guesser right here. Come on, for two dollars, fool the guesser. You, sir. Good evening, and welcome to the Antiques Road Show. Tonight, we're coming to you from the Washington State Convention Center in Seattle, Washington. Now, let's go inside and see what our appraisers have found. Well, this is quite an interesting painting you've brought here. You can see on the back this signature. This is a Gustav Klimt. This is an original. It's very rare, but uh, you've altered it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Those are googly eyes that I, I, I put them on there because I thought it would kind of liven up the picture. And if you go like, I, 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 I. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Well, I have to tell you, an original clamp is a very, very valuable object, but with googly eyes... It's more. Actually, no, it lowers the value. Oh. I'm sorry. It I does. can take them off. That's it. Okay. Oh. Uh, could you do that over there, please? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do that over there. Thank you. All right. Now, let's take a look at this um, baseball memorabilia. This is very exciting. This has really taken off lately. It's a field where there's a lot of excitement with the home run records and everything. And you say this is the actual 70th home run ball. Is that correct? That's right. I caught it myself. Well, that's amazing. This is truly a one-of-a-kind item. Now, are you planning on selling this, or are you going to give this back to Mark McGuire? Oh, no. This isn't McGuire's. Uh, this is Bobby Ayala's. It's the 70th home run he gave up this year. Oh. Yeah. That, uh, that happened back in August there. Uh -huh. So, uh, what's it worth? Uh, a ball from a losing Mariners game? Not much. The market's flooded with those, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, well, you've got an interesting porcelain item here. Can you tell me about it? Well, I know a little bit about porcelain, so when I saw this at a garage sale, I was very excited, and I got it for 50 cents. Well, I can see why you were excited. What you have here, actually, is a Haviland Limoges cup. It's mm -hmm. got the traditional light green floral print here that's characteristic of uh, Haviland China, circa, mm -hmm. I would say, 1890, mm -hmm. 1900. Do you have any idea of the value? Uh, a lot more than 50 cents. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, it would be quite a bit more. I would estimate probably about $5,000 more. Yeah. Yes, so now the person who sold this to you, this was an elderly person? Well, yeah, a little older. Uh -huh. Well, there must be no end uh, to the joy you must feel of uh, taking advantage of a confused old woman <laughs> who was selling her possessions to put some food on the table. You paid 50 cents, is that right? Yeah. Well, here. There. <laughs> now it's worth 50 cents. Selfish bitch. <laughs> Now, what sort of items do you have here? Well, this one is from, um, it's from my Grammy's place. Uh-huh, uh-huh. She died. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. 
I think I think it's like a tassel from a Victorian curtain. I just I just thought it was beautiful, but I've got no idea how much it's worth. Actually, what it's you just... have here is a uh, cat of nine tails. This is SM equipment here. Uh, <laughs> my guess is that your Grammy would probably whip her uh, little slave boys with this while they were on their knees in front of her, and then I imagine she'd probably tighten their nipple clamps and make them <laughs> clean her house with little feather dusters clenched between their teeth. This is a very good item. I'd estimate the value at about two hundred dollars. Is there anything else? Else you have there with you? Uh, there, well, she also had some ivory walrus tusks, but oh. uh, never mind. Oh. All right. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, apparently, you've got a. There's an interesting glass item here. Is that right? Hi. Uh, yeah. Uh, not long ago, I had a chance to go to a, uh, an estate sale for uh -huh. a once in a lifetime opportunity, uh -huh. and I, I basically poured all my life savings into this piece. It's uh, Tiffany glass. I okay. There. <laughs> well. I'll tell you, I have a little problem with the authenticity of this. It looks like this is a mayonnaise jar with the word Tiffany written on it. Well, the, the, the word Tiffany is written on it. It's spelled right and everything. Yes, but it's written with a black magic marker. Well, they told me that Tiffany did that sometimes with his class, with the black magic marker. No. Okay, well, that's good information. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, you have to be careful about these sorts of things. Right. Okay, I sure will. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. That's okay. good. I'm sorry. It's just that we, no, you know, we no. have to go on with the show. Mm -hmm. So if you could take your, uh, your, your jar. Sorry. If you could just, please, we have to go on with the show. If you could take your jar. Sorry. Whoa, hey, whoa. How much you give me for this? Uh, that looks like, uh, that's a car stereo, is that right? A hundred bucks, hundred bucks. It's got the dull Well, that's not really an antique, well, you see. This is sweet, and the store's 800. I can reach for one. Okay, look, I can't yeah, really... Yeah, yeah, never mind. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like you've got an interesting historical document there. Yes, I do. Uh, I've done some research, and if I'm not mistaken, I think I might have an original copy of the Magna Carta. Oh, my God. I think you could be right. Let me take a closer look at this. You know, the ink is correct for that period. The parchment is right. If I could just take a closer look at this. Oh, my God, yes. Yes. It's, uh, no, oh, my God. No, no, uh, no, no. The, uh, the, uh, the originals don't, uh, they don't burn like that. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. We'll see you next week on the Antiques Roadshow. Okay, uh, I'll guess that uh, her breasts aren't real. <laughs> oh! Mm. oh go, okay, okay. I'm guessing that my nose is broken and that uh, she's sleeping with her tennis coach. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm guessing that I'm about to pass out <laughs> and that she weighs about 122 pounds. What a fraud. He was way off on the weight. <laughs> Tonight's late report is brought to you in part by Touched Inappropriately by an Angel. Wednesdays at 8, right after Thong Bikini Beach. the late report. Well, a sixth grade boy at Whitman Middle School in Seattle has been expelled for bringing a small squirt gun to school. One of his classmates who brought a super soaker will be put to death by lethal injection. <laughs> a study done by the University of Washington and Yale University shows that nine out of ten people have unconscious prejudice. The other one in ten has very conscious prejudices and lives in Idaho. The Seattle Mariners have signed an 18-year-old Korean pitcher named Cha Sung Bak. Mariner fans hope the new pitcher will replace 36-year-old I Suck Bad. <laughs> yeah. 
Morton's of Chicago, a high-priced steak chain, plans to open on 6th Avenue next spring. As a competitive edge against the established El Gaucho and the Metropolitan Grill, Morton's will let you choose your own cow fresh from a giant salt water tank in the middle of the restaurant. <laughs> Workers at a site on the Hanford Nuclear Reservation destroyed millions of red harvester ants this month that may have become contaminated by deadly underground radioactive waste, uh, waste pipes. Citizens are advised not to worry, though, since all the infested ants have been wiped out. Let's go now to Hanford, where Jim Foreman is standing by. Jim, there's the King helicopter. Jim is on the ground. Now, Jim, what about those ants? Oh, my God, Jim! Oh, Jim, are you okay? Speak to me, Jim. Hmm, well, I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Tacoma has begun to turn the methane gas emanating from their old landfill into enough electricity for 1,000 homes. 1,000 really stinky homes. <laughs> and now with a look at the current cinema is our own Joy Jenkins at the movies. I have to admit that I had high hopes for Jamie Blank's new teen horror flick, Urban Legends, which opened in Seattle last Friday. The premise seemed hopeful. A campus killer offing student body at a New England college, according to urban legends. They had strong material to play with. Exploding animals and microwaves. Caller IDs that tell us that he's in the house. You get the picture. The movie began with the most quintessential of urban legends. The man in the back seat. An unsuspecting young driver pulls away from a gas station, believing she's alone in the car. But she's not. The stuttering gas station attendant had attempted to warn her of her uninvited passenger, but she didn't listen. So as she's driving along this dark, deserted highway back to the safety of her sorority, she was completely oblivious to the fact that there was someone in the car with her <laughs> with an ax who was waiting to kill her like an animal. So just when she thought she was safe, she wasn't safe. It was like a nightmare because he was there and then there was like a stuttering bloody head on the summit and, and then she thought, uh, someone Finally, Jimmy Buffett played to a big crowd of his fans Wednesday night at the Tacoma Dome. Following the concert, Buffett got into a van, drove north, and spent the next day wasting away again in Marysville. <laughs> There's been a late report. Don't go away, because we're coming right back. Just look at that sign up there and tell me, what does it say? The bread store. Look up at that sign there and read the big letters to me. The bread store. The, the bead store. Which is it? The bead store. Okay. But when you first read it, what did you think it said? Bread. Yeah. The bread store. Okay. You want to take, take one more look at it, okay? It's the bread store. Is it the bread store? Yeah. Read that sign for me, that, the big sign there. It's the bread shop. Look at that sign up there. And tell me, what does it say? It says, beads for jewelry, not bread for eating, okay. but bread store. Okay. Do that again for me. Beads for jewelry, not bread for eating, the bread store. Okay, so you've read the small signs, and yeah. then you read the big sign, and you think it says... That what's it's, the red letters? Uh, the bread store. Okay, now, actually, it says the bead store. Oh, the bead store. Yeah. Yeah. See that? Yeah. How come I said that? Read me the big letters. What's it say? The bead store. The bead store. Okay. Okay. You want to take a look? Check it one more time. Just make sure. The bead store. Okay. That's, that's correct. No problem whatsoever. Uh-uh. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> That's our show this week. If you want tickets, call 421-5555. That's the line for tickets. We'd love to have you down here. You guys had a good time, didn't you? See? Join them. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.